Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews and on-site training. I have been wanting to make this episode for an extremely long time and I finally can. This is because just now, like within the last month less maybe, Visual Studio Preview Release 16.10, it's not even an official release of Visual Studio yet, supports const expert vector in C++ 20 mode. Now I had to go in and I had to say standard is C++ latest, but here we are, I have a project, a Visual Studio, that can work with const expert vectors. So we're going to discuss what exactly this means, like what are the uses and limitations of const expert vector. Now, before anyone asks, yes, this is Visual Studio, I have it in a Grubbox theme. Grubbox is my personal favorite theme for color syntax highlighting, and it is what I use in my NeoVim and in my CLion configurations as well. And I think that the theme that I managed to find for Visual Studio actually works pretty well. And I also have these handy little font sizer buttons right here where I can make all of the things bigger and smaller as necessary so it's nice and legible for those of you in TV land. All right, so I've got a vector. Now, a function just as simple as this one right here would have been invalid before C20. You go and try this on your compiler, this is not going to work. We're not doing anything. All we're doing is creating a vector, an, an empty vector at that. Now, this code does compile, and I will tell you as a spoiler alert here that IntelliSense does actually seem to be working correctly, uh, which isn't always a given when we're talking about bleeding edge features. So if I just go ahead and I hit the build button, there's the build button, then I can see that it compiles with no big deal, one thing succeeded, zero failed. Now, this would have failed simply because we're calling a non const expert constructor and a non const expert destructor on a standard vector in the scope of this function. Now, if you had done this, This is actually perfectly okay previous to C20 because this branch where the vector gets used is not being accessed in a compile time context for context. Now, if I had made this true, then in C17, this now becomes a compile time error because I'm trying to execute this branch, which is required to create a vector in a context per context because I'm assigning it to a context per value. Now, if I got rid of this, const expert here, then my comments are getting out of date. Okay, this is okay previous to C20 because I'm not trying to assign the result to a const expert value. So this is where we are. We can use a vector in a const expert context. So let's just go ahead and back all of this up. There. Uh, there. So I just created a vector of five elements in a const expert context, and I'm not actually doing anything with it. And this parameter is meaningless. Let me get rid of this, and we'll clean up our comments here. I'm allowed to use a vector in a, C in a const expert context now. C++20, I'm allowed to use the vector. But what does that practically mean for me? I could do, you know, I don't know. Let's just create some condition. Whatever, if some condition is true, then I add some value to it. And then I could do something like, all right, so now I'm getting a, an error from IntelliSense. Now, I'm not actually returning the vector. I'm returning the accumulation of the values in the vector. So we're going to see if we're hitting a compiler bug. Aha, we're only hitting a bug in 
our IntelliSense at the moment. It's saying expression must have a constant value, attempt to access expired storage. That's not at all true. I'm accumulating this thing, and then if I were to do this, then we should be able to step into, I have no idea how this debugger is gonna look at the moment. Let's go ahead and try. Okay, the value equals 30, so fine. This seems to have worked perfectly fine, but an IntelliSense bug, that's fine. They'll get that fixed soon enough. Okay, so this IntelliSense error that we, we saw here, uh, this speaks to a larger problem, if you will, of using vector in a constant expert context. So let's just try to return this vector, just that simple. And then let's try to return the zeroth element here. Now we're still going to get this error that we have an expression cannot be interpreted, whatever that means. We have here no suitable conversion. Oh, from oops, that would be y. All right, let's make that return auto. Now we should get this error that says uh, invalid use of address of interpreter storage. So whenever you allocate memory in a constexpr context, and I covered this in my C20 constexpr new and delete episode, it must be freed before you leave that constexpr world. So this is, you know, uh, kind of weird. So I can't actually have a constexpr vector. That's not possible. I can never have a constexpr vector. I can use vector and string. All of this applies exactly the same to string. I can use vector and string in a constexpr context, but I can never have a constexpr vector or a constexpr string. So I'm going to get this error. Now let's go ahead and build and we'll see if we get a better error from the compiler instead of from IntelliSense. Let's see. Failure was caused by allocated storage not being deallocated. So we can't have storage that was allocated at compile time that persists uh, be until runtime. It must be freed. If it was allocated at compile time, it must be freed at compile time. All right, so if I can't use a vector at runtime, a constex per vector, if you will, at runtime, I can only use it inside this constex per context. And what, what good is it? Why, why do I have this? Well, the main thing is that it gives us a way of working in a dynamic world at compile time. So prior to the support for vector and constex per new and constex per delete, we would have had to have said something like, Something like this. We would have just said, I, I have no idea how many values I'm ultimately going to need. So I just have to make up some upper limit that can be used at compile time. And this is what we had to do when Ben Dean and I worked on our constex per JSON parser. We kind of had to say, well, I hope you're not planning to parse more than 50 elements or whatever. And you had to specify these things at compile time or as a template parameter or something like that. But it had to be a compile time choice. Now that we've got constex per vector and constex per string, we can program a little bit more naturally. We can just use these containers in a compile time context. But then we have to figure out how to let the compile time world and the runtime world intersect? How, how, how do they live together in harmony? So I want to make a quick clarification here. Let's see, we're still getting an IntelliSense error, but we should not get a compiler error. We did get a compiler error. Why? Return vector, return sum value does not match function type. Oh, I need to return value here. Okay. Okay, so IntelliSense is giving this this error because it says we're attempting to access expired storage. It's wrong still, but the compiler is giving us the right feedback here. So I can call this function that gives me a constexpr, a vector at compile time. So it's returning the vector to me. 
And I'm allowed to keep doing this at compile time for as long as I want to. I can pass these vectors around, whatever, in the constexper per context. They just can't escape from the constexper per context. So we're getting into trouble here if we try to have value equal to a vector. Now, let's say that I actually want all of the elements in this vector, and there's six elements in this vector. There's a couple of ways that we can go about this. But we have to, like I said, convert from the compile time world to the runtime world. Now, certainly a way to do this, and it's yet to be seen if this is going to ultimately prove to be the best way to do it or not, it would be to do something like, let's rename this function to get vector. Now, we already know that this code is going to fail to compile because we can't get that vector at compile time. Now, what we can do, though, is say, what is the size of that vector at compile time? That is information that's known at compile time, and it does not require us to be able to move the memory that had been allocated at compile time into the runtime world. We just have to say, well, no, what was the size of that thing? And this value will be created from the, run, the compile time allocated vector. Then the compile time allocated vector will be freed at compile time. And that value will be propagated here to main. So I just approved that I can compile this expression did not evaluate to a constant. Okay. Um, it's caused by allocated storage, not being deallocated. Okay. All right. I believe that this is actually a bug in the compiler here, but if someone knows better, then you can tell me. So, um, I'm pretty sure that that would actually be a bug because the dot size member should be const expert and the whole thing should have been able to evaluate at compile time and not generated that error. But let's go ahead and see what happens if we compile this. Okay, that compiled. We did effectively exactly the same thing. So now we have this size. This size that is given to us at compile time, and we can actually see here, this is const expert const uh, size t value equals six u. We actually know from IntelliSense that this thing's going to be equal to six. And interestingly, IntelliSense no longer has a problem with what we're doing. Okay, so I know the thing is six, a size is six, and I, have, I now know how much data needs to go into it. So I could do something like, All right, so now I have a function that is going to call my get vector, and I have to pass in at compile time how many elements I expect this vector go to return. Then, unfortunately, I'm in the situation where I'm having to kind of call this get vector function twice. So, if this is something that is relatively expensive to calculate, and your compiler is not very good at optimizing, um, multiple calls to the same constexper per function with the same parameters, memoizing them, then you could be in a problem here, really. We might end up being uh, asking the compiler to do the exact same thing twice. But this is an option, and it's something that works. Okay, we're still getting some confusion from our IntelliSense helpers here. That'll get sorted out, like I said. Uh, IntelliSense actually uses a completely different compiler than Visual Studio does. So it's not surprising when things kind of get out of, um, out of sync every now and then here during development. Keep in mind, I am using a preview version of Visual Studio 2019 here, just because they haven't incremented the name Visual Studio 2019, they have continued to increment the compiler. So I've taken this dynamic, what, what 
it's weird to think about. It was a dynamic compile time world, a world that's operating in a dynamic way at compile time with a const expr, and moved this into a statically known thing that's available to us in the runtime world, but was calculated at compile time. And so that's where my data here becomes uh, an int of six. And so this was all sorted out at compile time. Now you're probably thinking, well, why in the world do we have to go round about this way? Isn't there some way to do it all in one step? And I would say not in any way that I've been able to come up with because you, you have like a chicken and an egg kind of problem. You can't ask for a const expr value while you're in the middle of evaluating a const expr thing because that's not available to us yet. We don't have things like const expr parameters. So we have to fully evaluate the thing and say, well, what is the result size going to be? Oh, okay, thank you for giving me that. Now I'm gonna pass that result size back into another function that knows how to do this translation for me. And so, like I said, this is vector and string in C++20 if you want to use them specifically in a const expr context. They're going to give us a whole lot of flexibility, but I'm afraid that we're going to have to end up jumping through hoops more often than we feel like we should when we want to actually bring these values back out into the rest of the world. But that's what we have, um, and at least it's something, and I look forward to greatly taking advantage of this soon in my real projects that I am working on that are trying to take advantage of C++20 as much as possible. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe.